Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ghosts and girls. My name is Fajar Bakal, and welcome to the spookiest show around, bringing you the creepiest tales every Sunday to keep you up at night. If you enjoy my show, give the bell a click to be notified when I go on air. Now, for this evening, we have two special guests joining us for tonight's show. Without further ado, let's welcome Demon Creep and Monsters in My Mind. Hello, Fitch. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. And thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Likewise. It's an honor having you here, you two. I also wanted to tell you something before we jumped into tonight's stories. There's a fair chance we might have another unexpected visitor this evening. Because my neighbor, Mr. Skinwalker... And my lovely landlord, Mr. Slenderman. Seems to have a problem still. Oh? I'm pretty sure he's just an urban legend, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Also, where did the thunder come from? I have no idea what you're talking about. Every guest that appears on the show complains about some odd noises that they hear randomly. But, as I was saying earlier, You'd be surprised at what goes on here. The strange occurrences that have been happening lately has made me rather uneasy. But thankfully, you guys are here to keep me company for tonight's show. Uh, right. Also, who the hell was that at the window? Um, yeah, I don't know about doing this, Chief. You guys are starting to concern me. You know, the funny thing is, I just remembered something. I wonder who that could be at this time of the evening. I'm sorry about that. I'll be right back. No worries. I'll be here. Yep. 11 minutes later. I'm back. Sorry about the wait. That's fine. Uh, also, who was at the door? There was so much going on. No one special. Just moments. Right. Now enough of my talking, folks. It's time to dive into tonight's stories. So, turn off the lights. Get comfortable. And let's sink into the tales that await you. Take it away, you two. This story is not about a ghost or an encounter with a creepy stranger. It's not even about a near-death experience or something like that. As a matter of fact, I was never in danger during the event I'm about to tell you about. Nonetheless... It's a disturbing memory that I will carry with me until the day I die. I grew up in a small city. The kind of place you could barely call a town if it wasn't for the sheer number of people living there. Downtown was only a couple of blocks long and in the middle of it was one of the biggest buildings in the area. It was the local movie theater, named after the city. I remember going there when I was very young, about seven years old and watching the first Pokemon movie. It was probably nothing compared to the theaters we have nowadays, but back then it was huge for me. I loved it. So when a few years later I heard the cinemas going out of business, I felt really sad about it. The building was sold to a religious group that used it for their services. You know the type. Loud music, big crowds with their arms in the air singing prayers, some having seizures on stage while the pastor yells through a mic. Every time I walked past the old cinema, I would see the announcements of the congregation where the movie posters would have been. And if they were in session, you could hear them singing from the other side of the street. This group owned the cinema for nearly a decade, until the local government bought back the building in order to restore it as a historic landmark of the city. When this happened, I was studying construction with the intent to follow architecture or civil engineering at college. And my class was very lucky to be involved with the cinema's restoration project because two of our teachers were architects working on it. I will always remember the day we went to visit the old cinema. Our class was small, only a handful of students, but we were all around the same age, so we all shared childhood memories of when the cinema was operational. We ran through the corridors of the auditorium, sat in the chairs, just like we did when we were little kids. 
and began stomping on the wooden floor with our feet, filling the entire room with the echoes of our drumming and our laughters. A little ritual of sorts everyone used to do right before the beginning of the movie. Once nostalgia time was over, we went back to the purpose of the trip and began to survey the building. We were very excited because that was a unique opportunity to go into the places we would never have been allowed otherwise. So we made sure to check every last corner, every single room, no matter how far, no matter how obscure. The first one we found was below the stage. On one of the corners there was a little door, not very visible, probably because it was meant for maintenance staff only. Behind it we found a long room filled with rusty boilers, part of the old heating system that was no longer in use. The place was a little creepy, with all of those old tanks and pipes crowding the narrow space. But what we found past them was what really started to freak us out. This room was small, very small. It was, after all, basically just leftover space behind the boilers. Yet it contrasted so much with the rest of the area around it. It may as well have been from a different place altogether. The walls were painted a light color, white I think. But I don't remember it very well because what really got my attention were the drawings in them. They were rainbows, the smiling sun, trees and flowers, and happy little people with smiles on their faces of dotted eyes. It was a daycare. The whole class and teacher gathered to see the discovery. We were all very confused about the strange placing of this room. Okay, we could understand the need for a place to keep the kids that were too little to be amongst the crowd during prayers. Or maybe the ones of the people who worked there, but the placing was just odd. The stage was probably one of the loudest places in the auditorium during the services. And this was right below it so there is no way it could be a quiet place for the children. We left the boilers room and continued our tour through the theater, a little puzzled about our finding but not giving it too much thought. Outside of the auditorium there were the bathrooms, both in terrible condition, the ticket sales booth, and a huge set of stairs that led to a mezzanine in the auditorium. Half of the seats there were totally ruined due to a water leak in the roof. And I curse these people for not taking proper care of the building. With that part done, all that was left was the projection room, on the third floor. Behind the tickets booth, there was a door that led to a spiral stair. I don't remember how tall it actually was, but it must have been over 10 meters of metallic steps without a single resting spot. I wasn't exactly an athlete, but I could walk several kilometers with no problem, and rode on a bike to and from school every day. Yet by the time I reached the top of the stairs, I was exhausted. And I wasn't the only one. All of my classmates complained about how hard it was to walk up there. After a short break to catch our breath, we moved on to explore the third floor. It was roughly a narrow passageway with a couple divisions to form different rooms. But it was more than enough for what it was made for. The first room from the stairs was a storage deposit, probably where they kept the movies and other equipment. And except for some trash, it was mostly empty. The second room was the one we were all excited to see. The projector room. The old machine was so big that it was still there, and there were even some pieces scattered around. It was quite a piece of history, and we were all very thrilled to check it out. So no one really bothered to move on to the very last room until we were about to leave. And there we saw it again. There was a train in this one instead of a rainbow. Something was written on it. Big, colorful letters. Something about Christ. I can't remember it well. The drawings were a bit old. The paint slightly peeled from the walls. But the colors were just as tearful as you would expect for a place where children play. My heart sank to my stomach as I came to the realization of what that place really was. The one behind the boilers probably serving the same purpose. I took notice of how isolated that room was, literally the furthest away you could possibly get from everyone else. I thought about the three floors of stairs 
and imagine what it would have been like to a child to walk all the way up, only to end up in that room. The room with the colorful train in the wall. My classmates and I exchanged horrified expressions, as I knew they were thinking the same. We never visited the theater again. Even though we continued with the restoration project for several months, and we never talked about those two rooms. Cases of molestation in the church are well known by everyone, to the point that the pedo priest is practically a cliché. But this is the kind of thing you think happens in some place far away, in another city, even in another country. You never imagine it can happen in the very same town you live, the place where you grew up, in the very same building where you once watched a Pokemon movie when you were seven years old. Okay, so let me get this straight. I'm a 15-year-old girl who lives in New Zealand. But when this took place, I was around 12 years old. In 2016, a couple days before Christmas, the worst thing happened to us. We found out my auntie died, which was on my dad's side, and they were very close. She was a jockey, and she fell off the horse, and it crushed her. Oh, and her favorite thing was the smell of lily flowers. This will be useful for later on. Anyways, after about two years from her death, we visited her again for Christmas. And we have been here to see her many times, but this time it felt different in a way. The air was heavy and I got this wave of dread. It was so overwhelming that I had to stay in the car for a little bit. Once I thought that the bad feeling had calmed down, I decided to hop out and look around the cemetery. And as I was doing so, I smelt a familiar smell like the smell of lilies. At first, it was comforting in a way, but then I felt like I was being watched. But like I could tell whatever this was that was watching me didn't want me there. Like I needed to leave, so I listened to my gut feeling and booked it back to the rest of the family. Not shortly after, once all of us were in the car driving back, we saw that there was something in the middle of the road. So we stopped. But the longer we stared at it, the more we realized it was my auntie and she looked worried, and about two seconds later our car comes flying by in full speed, and then she disappeared. I'll tell you now, it scared me, and I couldn't sleep that night. But the longer I thought about it, the more I realized that she saved us that day, and that she really is looking over us. Wow, that wraps up today's interesting show. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode, folks. Also, I wanted to give a special thanks to Demon Creep and Monsters in My Mind for joining me this evening. If you guys want to give their channel a visit, I highly suggest you do. They both have a variety of content that is absolutely spectacular. I'll link their info in the description. But that's all for now. Thank you for tuning in and tune back in next Sunday. My name is Fetch Arbuckle. Signing off.